Welcome to week three of the Shopify store reviews. So every single week I'm taking three random people that follow me on Instagram and reviewing their Shopify stores in a video like this one today. The plan is since there's loads of people out there right now building Shopify stores, making the most of that 90 day trial that Shopify are offering, making the most of the extra time as well that you have due to lockdown. Plan is then to continue to do videos like this once a week until I get through absolutely everybody. So if you do wanna get your store reviewed, it's dead easy to do. Simply head down into the video description below this video follow me on instagram and then look out for a post similar to the one that you see on your screens now with that being said then we've got a pet store to review a couple of general stores and um, thank you for tuning in i hope you enjoy it and let's jump straight into store number one so store number one is nyshout.com i'll be reviewing every single store on a mobile device because the majority of people who watch my videos use social media marketing as a way to drive traffic the majority of users of social media use a mobile device therefore the majority of your customers majority of your visitors will be on a mobile device too. So even though you design your store on a desktop, just make sure you check your store on a mobile device um, to make sure the layouts and things like that um, still look really good. So the first store we have here is called nyshout.com. Judging by the name, this is probably a general store. In fact, it says general store in the name there below um, in the logo. They have a free shipping bar at the top, which is nice. One thing I would do if this was my store is capitalize the first letter of each of those words. I think it just looks a bit more professional. The logo itself is, it's okay. Um, if it was me, I'd probably invest in something that looks a bit more professional um, now that might seem harsh logos aren't a massive deal but if it was me I would invest in that you can get a pretty decent logo now for about 20 quid um, if you go into fiverr.com now again that might sound quite harsh but I want to give my brutally honest feedback in these videos I wouldn't be doing you guys any favors if I didn't tell you the truth I would also remove the general store element from the actual logo as well there's no need to tell your customers that's what you are or that's what you do it's just a bit too obvious if you ask me if we have a look at the menu items they've got all all the ones you would expect to see. Uh, me personally, I don't really like the pale blue or grayish background. I would just keep it white, stick to kind of like neutral colors. They tend to do the best. With regards to the font on this website, now I would change this because to me it looks like some kind of Times New Roman font, which is like quite a professional, quite a formal font that you would write a serious letter in or something. Whereas being a general store, judging by the kind of words and phrases he's used and the images, it gives off, there's kind of like conflicting views there. You've got a really kind of formal font and yet you've got kind of casual words and casual images. So I would change this to something a bit more just easier on the eye, a bit more casual, something like a Helvetica, a Tahoma, um, a Roboto or a Laura, a Lato, sorry. Um, but apart from that, he's got all the required links. He's got collections, which you can click on, which will take you to the different product collections. Now, I would use collections as kind of like the overview if you had tons and tons of different other collections and products, but because he's only got three, instead of having that collections up there, I would just list them individually. That way, when your customer comes onto your store, they can see straight away exactly what kind of products you sell. Moving on to the product page then, this is where I wanna spend most of my time and focus when reviewing your stores because it's your first impression with your customer. Make sure any ads you run direct your customer directly to the product page so therefore make sure this is up to scratch because it's going to be your first impression any kind of spelling mistake layout issue is going to put customers off and they're going to leave without making a purchase so to start off then um the logo actually looks much better against a white background so perhaps you could change your home images your hero images to have a white background perhaps play around um, the actual product images themselves look pretty decent. Product name now, bike phone holder with 360 degree rotation is very basic. Um, if somebody come onto your store and found this product, but then wanted to find it elsewhere, because of what it's named, it's, pre it's gonna be pretty easy to find elsewhere. One kind of little tip or trick you can integrate to kind of reduce the amount of people who will find it elsewhere is to give it some kind of unique name. Um, unique to your store. So if they were just to copy and paste the name into Google or Amazon, um, there'll be no other products that show up. It's just one little kind of thing you can do um, just to stop that from happening. The price is also very cheap. I would consider, I know from personal experience, this particular product has two versions. There's also a metal version. Um, if it was me personally, I would opt for the metal version because it's a bit more expensive and it leaves a bit more room in there for your marketing costs. Um, to sell this successfully on Facebook, for example, you probably have to get purchases of like five to 10 pounds just to make it work. Moving on to the variant section of this particular product, because there's no borders on the drop downs, it kind of just looks a bit mishmash, doesn't really look that professional in my opinion. Um, again, with the text as well, just kind of looks out of place with everything else on the store. Um, so if it was me, I'll change up the text, I'll change up the variant boxes just to make it a bit more defined on the screen so the customer can see a bit more clearly what they have to do. 
I would also remove the ships worldwide since there's only one option. There's no point in having that option up there. It's just going to draw your customer's attention to something they don't need to worry about, which is ultimately drawing their attention away from the most important thing, which is making a purchase. If they click black, green, the variants are named correctly, which is good to see. Now I selected green and it has selected the green product image. So that's great. That's all working and functioning correctly. Me personally, I like to make the add to cart button a solid color so it stands out a bit more on the page. Um, trust me, these little differences can make all the difference to how many people actually click it. If you test it, test an add to cart button like this for two weeks, then change it to a solid color, test it for another two weeks, and I can pretty much promise you that you, the amount of people who click it will be higher. You'll get a higher conversion rate. Moving down the page then, he has his trust badges, got no issues there, they look absolutely fine. There's a bit of a big gap in fact between the trust badge and the video that starts. If we have a quick look at this and see see what it looks like. I'm assuming this is probably the video ad which he uses. Um, it looks pretty good actually to be fair. Um, no issues there. Instead of having the whole nice shout thing scrolling across, I would just have your logo perhaps in one of the bottom left or right hand corners. I think it just looks a bit more professional. When I see that kind of scrolling across, it reminds me of creating PowerPoints when I used to be in middle school. Apart from that though, the actual content of the video ad is pretty good. It shows clearly the benefits of the product and how secure and how trustworthy the product is to put your phone in it, which is good. Um, and then moving down, he's got quite an extensive product description. Now, a couple of things I would do with this. Number one is either shorten it down considerably. Your customers aren't going to read through every single word. There's absolutely no way. I can pretty much guarantee that. Or highlight the key features in a bold font just to draw your customer's attention to the key features um, and benefits. If we move down the page, we can see he's got a you may also like, which is great. I always recommend having this at the bottom of your product page because if somebody is interested in a particular product within a certain niche, then you should always recommend similar Similar products to it. However, one of the, the mistakes he's made here is he's recommending products that are completely different to the actual products that's on the page. So these need to be bike products um, in this you may also like section. And he's also got a ton of white space here. So I would also reduce that because it, it looks like a layout issue. It doesn't look very professional in my opinion. If we look at the bottom of the page, he's got all the kind of expected links you would expect to see on a store, which is great. However, he's got no reviews on this page. So if it was me, I would install something like Looks Reviews. Personally, that is my favorite favorite review app in fact to use. There is a link in the description below for an extended free trial if you do want to um, use it. So that's something I would definitely work on before I start spending money on ads. Simply by having reviews on your product pages will tenfold increase your conversion rate, especially with a new business people have never heard before. They're going to be hesitant as it is. If you don't have any reviews on your store, it will affect you massively. With that being said, then that pretty much covers this store. So let's move on to store number two. Store number two, then we have yetsypets.com. Quite like their name, actually. They have the free shipping bar at the top, which is great. And the logo is pretty decent as well. Not too bad so far. Cover image at the top or the hero image, depending on what you want to call it, is, is pretty cool. It's quite an interesting um, image that's going to get people's attention. So that's great. One thing you could do here here in fact is add some maybe a line of text at the top with a link to a certain collection of products that you have on offer just give people somewhere to click as soon as they come onto your home page we have a look at the menu items then they have home collection about us faq and a currency selector which is great again if it was me instead of having collection let's click on this in fact um, it just takes them to the whole product. So what I would do, assuming they have more products than this, is break this down into individual collections. So you could have cats, dogs, frogs, parrots, birds, depending on what kind of animals you were selling products for. That being said, then let's check out one of these product pages. In fact, no, we need to finish off the home page. Scrolling down, they have all the different collection images, which is absolutely fine. And then all the kind of expected links you would expect to see in the footer. They do have a Gmail email address there. If it was me, I would remove this from the footer and have it on a contact us page because more people are going to see it if it's on the home page in the footer and because it is a gmail email address it doesn't look that professional in my opinion so i'll try and hide this as much as possible but make it findable if people do want to find it if that makes sense so basically remove it from your footer and put it on your contact us page or get a custom domain email you can set this up through shopify themselves that forwards to your gmail or simply get a g suite account which is really cheap if we have let's have a look at one of their product pages so let's go for dog owners since i own a dog and see if there's any products I'll be interested in here. So let's have a look at this particular product, the Yetsi Electric Pet Comb to Repel Lice. Now, I like the fact that they've integrated their brand name into the product name. It makes it sound branded like it's a unique product to them and their brand, which is a great idea to do. They've also got some form of review app here. However, no particular reviews on this product. Now, if you did want to import reviews from AliExpress, you can do that using looks reviews as well. Overall, so far, so good though. Apart from having reviews, then this looks like a really decent product 
page so far. Now I'm guessing this is probably the debut theme, so kind of your next step would be to upgrade to some form of a paid theme just to make it look a bit more professional. But apart from that then, moving on to the variants. Now see, this is where there's some confusion, it doesn't make sense. This will put probably 90% of your visitors off if they see this. You've got this box here labeled as color. However, it should be plug, it should be labeling the different plugs. So it doesn't correspond, it doesn't match up. It's quite a basic feature of any e-commerce store. So if you can't get that right in a customer's mind, are you gonna be able to deliver their products right? Are you gonna be selling high quality products? So it's all these kind of things, all these kind of questions and doubts you're gonna put in your customer's mind, which you don't want to do. Next thing as well, we've got ships from United States. Again, there's no other options here, so I would just completely remove this and go straight into your add to cart button. One thing I would do as well, the kind of blue color that you're using across your website, I would actually make your add to cart button that same color, just kind of creates that uniformity, that professionalism, and that kind of sense of a brand throughout your store. Moving on to the next section of the product page, we can see they have a countdown timer. Now, it doesn't look too bad. However, I'm always in two minds about countdown timers. Depending on what kind of store you're running depends on how well they work or they fit in. So it's the kind of thing you must split test to see if it actually works for you. So run some traffic to this product page or a different product page using countdown timers. Do it for two weeks. Make a note of your conversion rate. Remove the countdown timer. Do the same. Make a note of conversion rate and obviously just go with the one um, that works the best. Moving down into the product description, we're still shipping on all orders. They've got a note about um, the virus, which is great because it kind of acknowledges it, shows people you are still a current business and you're still actively working, which is good. And then they go into the rest of the product description. They have a few different features in bold, a guarantee in bold, which is great. So they've got all the kind of required information there. However, with this particular product, because it's not necessarily the everyday thing that you would see, I would definitely include some form of a video just demonstrating how it works or some form of instruction um, illustrating or explaining to people how it works. I think that would go a long way for products like this one. Also, one thing I have noticed is as you can see, the product images have or show the actual plug that you get with it. Now, if we just take, for example, what we see on screen, we can't see that there's an option to change the plug. Now, this might seem absolutely crazy and you might think I'm talking rubbish here, but trust me, there'll be customers that come onto this from the UK, they'll see a Euro European plug on there or an American plug and they'll say oh they don't have it in a UK plug and they'll just leave they won't bother to look down to see if you can select a different plug so I would remove all the plugs from the product images if we scroll down then just to finish off this product page we can see they've got recommended products which is great um, and they're within the dog niche so they are relevant too. one thing I would say is to kind of increase the professionalism or the uniformity of your store try and make all your images the same style so you can see kind of like the top right and bottom left have a clear background a white background whereas the one on the top left doesn't so that's one little thing that i try and do throughout my own stores and then at the very bottom of the page they have customer reviews now if it was me i would actually put this above the recommended products because you're on the product page then you've kind of left it because you're talking about other products and then you're going back to speaking about that original product again so i'll just have this above the recommended products. Moving on to the third and final store, then we have Excellent Shoppers. Now, as you can see in the URL, they've misspelled it on purpose, I'm assuming, because excellentshoppers.com wasn't available. Now, that may come across as a bit unprofessional in terms of a customer's point of view because you haven't spelt it right. However, if it was me, I would continue to move forward with this store and then if you weren't finding any success then as a last resort go back and change the URL. I'm not quite sure whether it would be that much of a big deal. So the shipping bar has an acknowledgement of the virus however it's quite an extensive message. If it was me I'll try and shorten this to two lines maximum and then perhaps have a link that takes people to a separate page solely about the virus which gives them more information. So it could be operating or shipping orders as normal for more info click here something like that next up they have their logo and because it's just in text it goes on to two lines this is a big no-no this will put customers off it doesn't look very professional so if it was me I would invest in a logo from Fiverr you can like I said you can get one for about 20 pounds or put one together yourself um, using like a free logo creator online that being said though they've got a pretty decent looking hero image at the top they've got a link to a particular collection I like the color of blue the theme they're using throughout the store which is quite um, like a neutral and professional and trustworthy color then they have the different collections but then they have no particular products in this section here so before you start moving on to facebook ads then i would definitely add and 
product um, to this section here. Moving down then into the header, we can see they've got all the expected links you would expect to see, plus they have a custom domain email too, which is a really good job, well done on that part. If we go up to the headers then, let's have a look. They've got a white background. They've got all the different product collections listed individually, which is perfect, works absolutely and um, perfect. If we have a look at pet products then, I'm always interested in pet products being a dog owner. Um, they only have one particular product here. So if it was me, perhaps fill this out with say 10 to 15 different products per collection. Let's go for, Let's go for toys and education because there's a lot of people at home with their kids right now since they're off school. And let's have a look at this Little Painter's 3D Magic Pen. So first of all, we can see because that free shipping bar at the top is so extensive, it kind of takes away from the product page. Same thing with the logo being over two lines as well. The other thing as well, I would make this perhaps the first image unless they've got a better one of just the pen itself because when somebody comes onto here, it doesn't look like they're buying a pen. It looks like they're buying some kind of band or something here. I also don't like the fact there's text in the images either. Text needs to be kept to the product description in my opinion. If we keep scrolling through the product images, then essentially your product images are like one of the most important things which are gonna sell your product. So it's important to have good ones. As you can see, they have kind of like a plain, a clear white background followed by images that don't have a white background. So there's no kind of uniformity there. So that's one thing I would work on um, before I'd start running Facebook ads. And the images kind of demonstrate what the product does. But again, with a visual product like this, something that would sell this product straight away and convince people to buy it is a really effective video showing how the actual product works. The name of the product, Little Painters 3D Magic Pen, which is great. They've kind of given it a unique name instead of just pretty much telling people what it is. They've got a review app with a nicely colored stars. They've got the price. And then they have an issue here with the variants. If we have a look at the variant names themselves, then they've got kind of lengths and a color, length, color, copyboard pattern here. So what I would do is to make it as simple and easy and straightforward as possible for your customers is to simplify this and perhaps introduce two different variants which you can select. So you could perhaps have a color one that has blue, purple, pink, and yellow. And then you have a length one where people can select 100 meters, 200 meters, and so on. Just try and make it as simple and straightforward as possible for your customers because if they get confused, they're not gonna send you an email, wait for your response, and then come back and make a purchase. They're just gonna leave and probably try and find it somewhere else. With that being said, then moving into the kind of description side, they have a really nice ad cap button, by the way. As you can see, when you're on the screen, it's kind of like the main thing that sticks out, which is absolutely perfect. Moving into the product description, free shipping and delivery on all orders, which works really nice, a really good benefit there for every customer that comes onto your page. And now they have kind of like important things in bold which is nice but then the item description as you can see the font is like twice the size as this section at the top so this all needs to be the same size font otherwise it just looks out of place and a bit unprofessional they have two trust badges here um, i think that's a bit overkill i think one would be enough i would remove the yellow one because there's colors on that that you don't really see anywhere else throughout the store. And then what I would do is change this one below it to a white background around the thumbs up just to make it a bit more in keeping and in fitting with the theme and design of this store. Apart from that, really good. They have looks reviews installed by looks of things. Um, they've customized the colors of the stars as well to make those stand out. They've got four star reviews as well as five star reviews, which is good. You don't just want 200 five star reviews because that looks a bit dodgy in terms of customers eyes and they have product images as well, which is great. Product image reviews are like one of the easiest things you can do immediately just to increase your conversion rate overnight. They really are that powerful. It's evidence people have bought this product from you and been happy with it. So definitely integrate these no matter what your product is, the more of these you have then the better. Then they go into having a product recommendation section. Again, the products are relevant to the product above, which is great. They have a link back to the collection, which is cool. And then they have all the required and expected links you would expect to see in the footer. If we go up then, let's just test this store's um, checkout process. We go add to cart and they've got a drawdown cart. Now me personally, I prefer to have it. So when somebody hits add to cart, it takes them straight to the cart. The reason for this is because it just makes the whole checkout process that much faster, which can make a difference to your conversion rate. Well, it will make a difference to conversion rate. If we go to view cart then, um, as you can see that footer at the top takes up so much of the page, it looks a bit 
um, out of place a bit unsightly on the eye but apart from that they've got a really nice checkout page um, a really nice cart page sorry they've got a checkout and then they've got all the different links so people can see they can safely pay using Apple Pay PayPal or Shop Pay so other than that they've done a really good job and with that being said then guys I'm going to wrap the video up there I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you're still watching if you are thank you very much I really do appreciate the support on these videos if you enjoyed it please do hit that like button please do subscribe and finally then before you go if you are interested in finding an e-commerce or Shopify program that comes with my full support and guidance please do check out my e-com academy there will be a link in the video description down below which will take you to the page and show you all the information resources support and testimonials and with that being said thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one mm -hmm.